Welcome back to Talking Sheffield on Sheffield Live TV this Thursday night, special one with Jose Samedo of uh, Sheffield Wednesday, our special guest, thanks to Andy Giddings, who's vanished to be replaced by James Gregg for the second <laughs> half uh, of, of the show. We're going to bring James in for his roundup. Yep. Uh, just before we do that, you have played in four years at uh, Sheffield Wednesday, and this is quite normal. You've played for three managers. Yeah. You know, Gary Megson, the one who brought you in, uh, Dave Jones. Uh, in fact, you've played for four managers. Four, four managers, four. yeah. Dave Stuart Jones, uh, Stuart Gray, uh, and now Carlos Cavalier. Uh, this is normal for English football, yeah? <laughs> four years, four managers. No, that would be crazy, but uh, all of them differently, to be fair. Yeah. All of them differently, and all of them play, play a big part to the club where he is now at the moment. You know, Gary Mason, he was the first one to build a good, a good team for us to get the promotion. And unfortunately, it was with him we get the promotion, but it was with him everything start. And Dave Jones took charge and uh, put, give us another, another click to get that promotion in the great style. Because uh, when he took charge, we was at least, uh, we went in February when he took charge and we just draw one game. We didn't lose. And it was a great run and we get promotion in good style. Yeah, and then Stuart, Stuart Gray also yeah. doing a very good job. In very the good job, very good job. Establish, yeah. establish ourselves in the division, which it was before the, before Stuart Gray was a little bit difficult to get uh, ourselves established. But Stuart Gray managed to do that, establish the the club in the championship. Those and three very different. Those three yeah, managers, very, very, very different. Very, very, very different. different. Completely different to one another. Completely. Gary Mason is very. Very tough manager, like, I mean, uh, he loves, he loves Chef Wins more than anything else. He's crazy for the white and blue, he's the proper mm. training games from the minute one he leave, like if he's the last one. Like, it, is, it doesn't give you, a, you know, you don't have time to escape on him, you know, and it's very difficult. Dave John is nice and relaxed, nice and calm, so, so calm. And Stuart's great is balanced, mm. mixed both. A bit, bit of both. Yeah, a bit, bit of both. Most people meeting him thought he was a very calm, nice man. No, no, very... Could, couldn't imagine him really shouting. In no, the in, the, in the dressing room. But he could do. Yeah, in the dressing room, yeah. Inside. Inside the dressing room, when the game is, doesn't, all, doesn't go the way he wants, yeah. and where we are not performing the, the way he wants, he, he screams a little bit. Not like Gary Mason, <laughs> but a little bit. And the, Carlos Carvajal is the... Right now is is the top one, you know, is the top one because uh, is uh, is so is an expert of motivation, you know. I think uh, our success we've been every season is so uh, is an expert on motivation because uh, we play every game like if it's the last game, mm. and uh, Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesday is uh, we win one game, we forgot about this game quickly because there is another one now. Mm. Even the excitement when we beat Arsenal. Normally, we're supposed to have a good week of enjoyment, but it didn't even to touch once on the winning. Mm. We win Arsenal on Tuesday, Wednesday we're training, it didn't even mention really? Arsenal. It mentioned the next game. Yeah. It didn't even allow us to breathe on the winning. No, no, no. Next game, you know, and, yeah. and we imagine to did that because uh, none of us talk about this game. No. We all, always talk about the next game. Yeah. And he manages to do that, and without we realize what he's doing, but we went on what he wants. You said he was the best. He's the best one that you work with at Sheffield Wednesday. Yeah, because he combines the everything. He knows, he knows inside of the pitch how he set up the team, and he knows how to motivate the players. And he's the best one of your career, therefore. Yeah, your career. To thinking, to thinking now overall, I think. Is the best manager because uh, oh. he's, he's an expert inside of the pitch and motivation the players, put the players ready, set up the team mm. the way he wants to play organization inside of the pitch and uh, he, proved, he proved to be the best. Uh, nice man, cheerful personality, yeah. but he can, he can lose it as well, can't he? He can? Te lose it, temper-wise. Yes, he, he yes. He can. Oh, I remember once when we play Middlesbrough. Uh, Middlesbrough, yeah. That was the one in the dressing room half time. Jesus Christ. His, assist, <laughs> his assistant manager suffered. 
even his assistant manager suffered. His uh, right hand yeah. suffered with his temperament because he was he's really mad. He's a, he's a big man. He's a big man. He's a proper, he's the man to drive the men, you know, and uh, he shows that. And the, the results we've been there is a big part. He played a big part on it because yeah. he's top, he's top manager. Yeah, top, yeah. top man. Uh, you know, the second Lee Bullen was in here saying, yeah, he, he, oh. he went a right go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Carlos himself told me he was kicking a water bottle around the dressing room. All over the place, all over the place. Yeah, right. He gets mad all over the place, you know. But that's rare, isn't it? He doesn't do that very often. No, 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 not very often because uh, he's, he's very like, he's very calm, very calm manager and he knows how to motivate and to take the best yeah. of the players. Yeah. That's why he doesn't need to take that very often. No. But it take down that time, but since that, yeah. he never did because he never was needed to do, but we know he's capable of it. You know it's there. Yeah, yeah as we, you know, say, we know it's that's there. That's important yeah, that you know. That's why we didn't give him room to do that. Yeah. And we hope not to give him room to do that until the end of the season. I hope for your sake you don't give him which, room to do that. Yeah. Which is a good signal. If he didn't yeah. do that, it's a good signal because we are doing well. Yeah. Lots more chat where this came from with, with uh, Jose Semedo as we talk about Sheffield Wednesday players. They've got excellent yeah. prospects for the season. But in the meantime, there's plenty more going on than just Sheffield Wednesday and there's more going on than football. Of course, Gray. of course there is. Yeah, well, Sheffield Wednesday and Jose, of course, will be travelling down to Cardiff on Saturday when they play again. It's a massive game for the, well, the massive. Um, uh, the only goal difference separating those two sides, uh, sixth and seventh in the table respectively Cardiff and Sheffield Wednesday so that'll be a good one on Saturday hopefully the right result for the blue and white half of this city comes Saturday evening Blades versus Coventry in a televised game on Sunday not many people know that it's not being publicized that well so hopefully I've helped you out there if you're a Sheffield United fan by telling you it's midday on Sunday the kickoff and it is televised Coventry second in the league one table so again a very big game for the Blades as they try to climb closer to where they should be really um, low Local football now. Hallam FC beat lowly Wurzborough last week. 3-0 to get back to winning ways. Ryan Hindley's men, uh, well deserved. And I know <laughs> that his chest will be bursting with pride, apparently. It, it, Alan, will, right? it will, as we speak. Uh, as we speak, he watches every week and uh, he loves it when we uh, mention Hallam FC. Good. And we mentioned the name of the manager as well. I was with him yesterday. We probably had between us about five pints of lemonade, I reckon. Between <laughs> five us pints of lemonade. At a Christmas too, yeah. Is that yeah, it? Yeah, about five, yeah. That's say. it. Perfect. Between us. Between us. <laughs> Tip, uh, between you. Yeah, oh, that's yeah. all right then. Not yeah. bad for you. It was a brilliant do, actually, organised by, uh, I must pay tribute here to Nick Johnson, who works for Chesterfield, is a freelance journalist, works for Sky, among others, who uh, were indebted to uh, the journalists and indeed the coaches and managers who came. Uh, we had a fantastic uh, Christmas lunch. They always look after us at Bramall Lane uh, for that. And then we go across the road to a certain hostelry where they also look after us until a certain late hour. Late and hour. we had a great, great day. Great day. You're invited next year, by the way, Joseph. <laughs> Why not? Yeah. I will be there. You'll be there. Right. Be you can have some lemonade with Alan. Yeah, some lemonade yeah. too. Of course you oh, can. It's quality as well. <laughs> we'll finish oh. off the local football at Sheffield FC. They travel south to Newcastle. Believe it or not, it's Newcastle Town in Staffordshire. I've not lost my mind when I say that. Looking for their first win in three games. Ice hockey now. Sheffield Steelers, they take on Fife on Saturday. And then they get back to Sheffield at 6am on Sunday morning before they play against Belfast at 5pm at the arena on Sunday. So that's a tough schedule um, for them as they aim to keep on their sort of mixed run um, at the moment at the top of the very, very competitive English Ice Hockey League. Rugby Union, well, it's great. We've got two teams in the same division from the local area. Area. Got the Sheffield Tigers, who beat fellow promotion chasers Hull 21-20 in a very fortunate win last week. Um, that was due to Hull actually missing a conversion um, right on the final whistle. So that was very lucky from them. But they've won seven on the spin and they're absolutely smashing that league. While Sheffield Rugby Club, they make it five wins on the spin after beating Rossendale in very adverse conditions last week. And they're now third in the table of National 3 North. And they're two points behind upcoming opponents on Saturday Furwood Waterloo. We'll finish with our individuals as usual. Squash, no silverware to end the season for Nick Matthew in Hong Kong last week. He lost in the semi finals to Australian Cam Pilly. And in golf, Matt Fitzpatrick carries on his formidable run of form with a four under par round of 68 in Thailand. Not a surprise there, really. Not really. No. Brilliant. Thank you very much, James. No Plenty cool. going on. He breezes through it. So, no so, 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 so we can still listen to Jose. That's <laughs> yeah, yeah, he just yeah. wants to sit on. We all, we all do. So, Sheffield Wednesday, 
seventh, I think. Am I right at the moment in the championship? Seventh, just outside yeah. the yeah. just outside the playoffs. You've been here four years. You can compare this team with others. I think I know how you rate it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think, like, like I normally say, I, I don't know if we have the best 11, but we have the best squad in the division, for sure. You know, as a squad, I think we, we have the best, the best in the division. I, mm. can, I can rate it uh, Wednesday this year like that because uh, it's been proven. We have uh, two, like if we split, we can say two good teams. Two yeah. teams can compete in this division, and I think this can play a big part. It must keep the season. players it must keep the players guessing from game to game as to what the lineup is going to be. Uh, yes. I mean you've been in and out of it. Yes, yes, uh, it is. It is and the, the good thing as a manager always in training you never show really which team he will pick up. At what, which, what, at what point do you know? How late does he leave it? Yes, yeah, sometimes he leave till the day of the game and sometimes the day before. Mm. He mixed he mixed a little bit and sometimes when you think you will maintain the same thing. You change eight, nine players. Yeah. You know, and the and the results still, still add. Still, yeah. we still had a good result on that, even with the changes. Yeah. You know, and the, I think, like I said, it will be, it will be. It's been an amazing season till now, and it will be an amazing season because I feel that dressing room, the same dressing room on the first year I was here, we get the promotion. This is the same feeling I have. Okay. I don't know if we will get promotion or not. I hope we have. But the spirit of the dressing room is exactly the same as that. Which is a great trick to perform that when you're making changes all the time and you're using the depth of the squad. Yeah. So people are in and out and everybody likes to be kept happy. Yes. Which is difficult, difficult balancing act for a it's coach. It's difficult, it's difficult. But yeah. that's why I mean, takes some good coach to do that. And yeah. uh, he's been doing that amazing. Even for us, sometimes some players are on the bench. We are, uh, we are delighted to get the, the win. We hope the team to do well. We're happy because we know next week can be you to play. Yeah. And your teammate will wish you all the best, you know. This is the difficult thing in the being a manager, I think, and being, I've been in and out the squad so many times. And uh, you see the same belief everybody wants. We are everybody driving in the same direction. You Which, know? when you consider the number of changes and the number of new players that were all at once, yeah. to create that spirit so quickly reflects very well on the head coach. Yeah, you know, he's had all these players coming in from all over the place. Yeah, but and I mean, he's created that in this time. I think that's yes. impressive. Yeah, but I, I think uh, the core, the core, he was there. You know, mm -hmm. the the core of uh, the two centre backs are there. Uh, I am there. Samuelson is there. Ati Nuhil is there. Liam Palmer. You know, still the same players been yeah. been a long time till established this club in the division, and when it comes in some new players, and Thanks to God, is the club had lucky to sign a good, a good players and a good men, yeah. you know, a good persons, and all of them coming all with a good attitude, with a desire of winning, and this with a manager create a good atmosphere in the club and a good spirit in the team, and this reflects on the pitch. Yeah, very important. As yeah. We came in on that conversation. How important it is to be a good person as well as a good player. Exactly, and, and you, uh, you represent that. Yeah, and uh, uh, thanks to God, we. All the players, all the new players signing, they are all top, top guys. Yeah. Very yeah. top guys and with ambition to do well. You, you, you play, you like to play, the team likes to play, but there's a toughness about it in terms of getting the ball back. Exactly. And getting it back quickly. Exactly. It's not a soft team that likes to play. This is no, quite no, a no, hard no. team. Me, both. Yeah. Both. With the ball, we like to play with the ball, do things well with the ball mm. and without the ball, work for each other, working hard. From like the like normal the manager said, our first defenders is a striker. Yeah. Till get to the back four, till get to the goalkeeper. You know, when the so in numerous times of the game, you can proper see that our first defenders is a strikers. They work hard they all over the all over the pitch, from the yeah. goalkeeper to the strikers, everybody in the same direction. Nobody's better as a combative player and for getting the ball back than Sam Hutchinson, who was excellent at centre back actually. Yeah. Last, uh, last time out, yeah, yeah. but we know what he's like in midfield. Now, you're a guy that's very hard in midfield. You're a great ball winner, and you've managed to win the ball mostly fairly. I mean, you've picked up a fair few yeah. uh, yellow cards in your career, as yeah. you would, but you've managed just to stay on the right side of the line. So can you help Sam Hutchinson now? <laughs> he's getting a lot of yellow cards. And yeah. we don't, you, know, you don't want him suspended. Can, yeah. you, can you help him? Is there some advice you can give him? 
Yeah, you, this is sometimes is to learn, to learn with the age and, uh, you know, experience, to get experience, to be yourself, discipline, even on the pitch, on that sense, this you will learn. I think is uh, it will get better. And uh, I think some of the yellow cards wasn't fair. No all no. can, no all is a yellow card, but because the way, the way sometimes he play, the way normal the defensive midfield play, the referee has on you straight away to cool you down is to give you a yellow card. The easiest thing for the referee to give, yeah. to have his job save is to give you straight away a yellow card because of your reputation. Hmm. Not only because he, he had a bad tackle to, to have a yellow card, but I think he will, uh, he will learn, you know, this is something, w the excitement, the excitement you are sometimes make you take a yellow card, but he will learn and he's been, he's been ex excellent so far and for me on Saturday was man on the match. Mm. He had an amazing game even on, on the position which he knows, center back, but he didn't play there for a long time mm. and I think he's been tremendous for us this season. Lucas Yao, perhaps not up at the standard that we have yeah. seen previously. It is his first season, his first yeah. few months in England. He's clearly a very exciting player. Well, top player, top player. You know, uh, yeah. we've seen a lot of good things from yeah. him, but there's going to be And I time. see even more, even in training, in yeah. the, even on the training ground, he's a top, top player. He's a top. This guy, this guy, I think, for me, will be one of the Wednesday legends in the future because he's a proper, he's a complete footballer. Yeah. You know, he's a complete, he have everything everything to to take Wednesday to the Premier League, to maintain Wednesday to the Premier League and yeah. to give Wednesday in the Premier League some hope to get in the European position for sure. Yeah. He's a top, top footballer. And, and also, I get the distinct feeling that even though Sheffield Wednesday are now in the much more healthy position yeah. of having players that other clubs would like to sign, exactly. you get the feeling with this chairman, Dave Holland Chancery, that sales are completely off the agenda. There's no, no, no way no that chance, will happen. No chance, no chance, because uh, what he did this year uh, for us shows you, shows you he wants this club to go to the Premier League. He doesn't want to lose his best player, not to go there. He, he's, not happy to be, he's not happy to be in the championship. Mm. You know, when this club wins the club, I say there's a Premier League club playing the championship division. You know, and he wants to combine everything. Premier League club playing the Premier League football. Well, far from losing players, I can see you gaining one or two uh, in uh, January, can't you, James? You Absol can, you, you can absolutely, absolutely. I was just going to ask you, ask yeah. you about you going back to the hard tackling, hard playing point. Has that come from Carlos, or has that come from the players? Has Carlos made you play hard? Yeah, I think I think this is one. Uh, he's because he's like that. Yeah. He's a very he's a very hard manager. Mm. I mean, like. Uh, he was a footballer before, yeah. and he's a very, very tough guy. Like he wants the players not to, not to hide from nothing, to work, to fight until the last minute. You know, yeah. and uh, I think uh, in some players there is natural on it. Uh, like uh, Sam is natural like yeah. that. I am natural like that. Some of the other players are natural like that. But when you see our reaction, he show us some videos where you see the strikers recovering the ball, Stri wingers. Normally you don't see that. Yeah. Normally you see the striker recover the ball, wingers recover yeah. the ball, and he manages to do that. You know, this is, uh, this is his work on yeah. it. He wants everybody at it. He wants everybody attack together, everybody defend together. But that's an English style as well. You know, yeah. and this is a Portuguese coach coming in and, and appreciating the English uh, elements of the yeah. English game, yeah, yeah. which he was at pains to point out early on. He wants to retain that. Exactly, you know, middle, but you've even even in English football, some of the teams you said this this player is lazy, yeah, and uh, this manager doesn't want that. He said everybody's the same. Everybody has to work hard to win the ball back. Yeah. Everybody has to work hard to try to score goals, mm. and that's why I said this this guy probably, he, I'm sure he will be one of the best managers Wednesday that ever had because. <laughs> so this season promotion. We are you know we are going game by game. You know, like I said, uh, everything we do, obviously everybody would like that. First, as a player, we'd love that. Mm. And still a long way to go. And right now we are in the position where we always want to be. Mm. We want to be on that position where we are now. Capable of challenging from exactly. that position. What about yourself down the line? Uh, you've learned a lot from a lot of different coaches and, yeah. and managers. Would you like to be one yourself? Yes, yeah, in the future, of, of course, I would like to to stay in football and uh, if it's possible to be a manager, mm. to be a coach and if it's possible to coach Safe Wednesday one day.
Why right, not? okay, why not? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, in, in, the, in the meantime, uh, you, you book, well, in the meantime, you're playing, yeah. and, and presumably you intend to play for as long as you can exactly. here, or, well, you know, realistically, are you looking beyond this season, or how long would you? Yeah, my dream, obviously, is to play, to play as long as I can, and uh, my dream is to retire at Sheffield Wednesday. Okay. If it's possible, it doesn't depend always as me, but always I will have well, this aim. You're only 30, so yeah. you, you, you're looking to be here for a few years yet. Yes, at least. As a player. At least Although, player. if Wednesday got in the Premier League, do players ever think, oh, you know, that's me out then, if we're in the Premier League? No. Would you look at it like that? No, no, no. no you no, would never. love to play for Wednesday. Yeah, I would love to play for Wednesday in the Premier League. But yeah. would that decrease your chances of staying as a player? if Wednesday were in the Premier League? No, I, this is the, all down to the manager. This mm. is all down to the manager if he wants to keep me or no. But I'm not being played much, but every single day in training, I do my best in training. Yeah. And this is everything is in my hands. In my hands is to do everything I can in training. And one day, if you interview the manager, you can ask him how he's in the training. Mm. He will let you know. He will tell you definitely this guy is one of the best yeah. training. Every, every single every, manager has appreciated you. Four managers here, and, they've, and that says a lot for, for Jose. Mm. You know, that four managers yeah. have all placed great value on you. You know, like, like I said, this is about oh. winning the day, you know. Every day is an opportunity. Well, that's it. Th that's why I, the, I named this book as a title, Winning the Day. Mm. Yeah, I, I must admit, I'm glad you explained it, because I, I thought it's as an odd title. It's certainly an unusual title, yeah. but it's an unusual book. And what you seem to be trying to do in this book is to encourage and advise young players yeah. on how to succeed. Yeah, Not just about how to play yeah. technically, but... Exactly. Anyone can make it. I, my best friend, my best friend and the guy I admire a lot, Ronaldo, mm. the, the proudest thing he said to me uh, this summer, we was on his house, we were sitting and watch uh, a bit of uh, football. He was playing football, some team in Netherlands he was playing and we was watching. And suddenly he turned to me and said, uh, Sammy, um, you know, I'm, I'm an honor to be your friend. And I will start to laugh. I said, no, no, me, I'm an honor <laughs> to be your friend. And yeah. I said, but how, why do you come that? He said, um, on the academy, on that generation, uh, we was about 50, 60 players, and only me and you made a professional footballer. Yeah. And you, in all of us, me, I was the best. In, uh, me, I was the best. He right. said that Ronaldo said, me, I was the but best. you were the best. Mm -hmm. No, no. Yeah, he, he said, Ronaldo, oh, he said he's a Ronaldo said, me, I was the best. I yeah. would make it anyway because mm -hmm. of my quality. As a joking side, he said that. Mm -hmm. And he said, but you was the less gift talent, but it's only me and you live from football today. Mm -hmm. That's why, because of your hard work, you never give up mm -hmm. in every condition, even when the manager let you out. You keep yeah. working every single day. And that is a greater achievement when you think about yes. it. It really yeah, is. It, it yes. definitely is. Oh, it's this been is fantastic. You know that to, hear, uh, to hear that from him, it was making me even more sure I'm in I'm, the right direction. I'm sure. You know, and been, uh, I, I wish we could carry, carry on. Yeah. Our time has beaten us yet again so Hello. quickly. James, thanks very much. Thanks to Andy thank Giddies for the first half. Jose Samida, thank you. My pleasure. So thank a real so pleasure. To see you. And this is for you. Be a pleasure. Thank this you very for much you. for the book. Uh, we've got cricket guests and also Carlton Palmer next week, believe it or not. So we'll see you for that. Repeated at 11 tonight. See you then. Thank you. Come to the until end of the season. I hope for your sake you don't give which, a reason to do that. Yeah. Which is a good signal. If you didn't yeah. do that, it's a good signal because we are doing well. Yeah. Lots more chat where this came from with, with uh, Jose Samedo as we talk about Sheffield Wednesday players. They've got excellent yeah. prospects for the season. But in the meantime, there's plenty more going on than just Sheffield Wednesday and there's more going on than football. Of course, Gray. of course there is. Yeah, well, Sheffield Wednesday and Jose, of course, will be travelling down to Cardiff on Saturday when they play again. It's a massive game for the, well, the massive. Um, uh, the only goal difference separating those two sides uh, sixth and seventh in the table respectively Cardiff and Sheffield Wednesday so that'll be a good one on Saturday hopefully the right result for the blue and white half of this city comes Saturday evening Blades versus Coventry in a televised game on Sunday not many people know that it's not being publicized that well so hopefully I've helped you out there if you're a Sheffield United fan by telling you it's midday on Sunday the kickoff and it is televised Coventry second in the league one table so again a very big game for the Blades as they try to climb closer to where they should be really um, low Local football now. Hallam FC beat Lowly Wurzel.
Middlesbrough last week. 3-0 to get back to winning ways. Ryan Hindley's men, uh, well deserved. And I know that his chest will be bursting with pride, apparently, it, it Alan. Will, right? It will, as we speak, uh, as we speak. He watches every week and uh, he loves it when we uh, mention Hallam FC. Good. And we mentioned the name of the manager as well. I was with him yesterday. We probably had between us about five pints of lemonade, I reckon, between <laughs> us pints of lemonade. At a Christmas too, yeah. Is that it? Welcome back to Talking Sheffield on Sheffield Live TV this Thursday night, special one with Jose Samedo of uh, Sheffield Wednesday, our special guest, thanks to Andy Giddings, who's vanished to be replaced by James Gregg for the second <laughs> half uh, of, of the show. We're going to bring James in for his roundup. Yeah. Uh, just before we do that, you have played in four years at uh, Sheffield Wednesday, and this is quite normal. You've played for three managers. Yeah. You know, Gary Megson, the one who brought you in, <laughs> uh, Dave Jones. Uh, in fact, you've played for four managers. Four, four managers, yeah. Dave Stuart Jones, uh, Stuart Gray, uh, and now Carlos Cavalier. Uh, this is normal for English football, yeah? <laughs> four years, four managers. No, that would be crazy, but uh, all of them differently, to be fair. Yeah. All of them differently, and all of them play, play a big part to the club where he is now at the moment. You know, Gary Mason, he was the first one to build a good, a good team for us to get the promotion. And unfortunately, it was with him we get the promotion, but it was with him everything start. And Dave Jones took charge and uh, put, give us another, another click to get that promotion. Payal is the, right now, is, is the top one, you know, is the top one because uh, he's, uh, he's, so, he's an expert of motivation. You know, I think uh, our success we've been every season is so uh, is an expert on motivation because uh, we play every game like if it's the last game. Mm. And uh, Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesday, is uh, we win one game, we forgot about this game quickly because there is another one now. Mm. Even the excitement when we beat Arsenal, normally we're supposed to have a good week of enjoyment, but it didn't even to touch once on the winning. Mm. We win Arsenal on Tuesday, Wednesday with training. He didn't even mention really? Arsenal. He mentioned the next game. Yeah. He didn't even allow us to breathe on the winning. No, no, no. Next game, you know. And, yeah. and we imagine he did that because uh, none of us talk about this game. No. We all, always talk about the next game. Yeah. And he managed to do that. And without we realize what he's doing, but... We went on what he wants. You said he was the best. He's the best one that you work with at Sheffield Wednesday. Yeah, because he combines the everything. He knows, he knows inside of the pitch how he set up the team and he knows how to motivate the players. And he's the best one of your career, therefore. Yeah, your career. To, think in, to think now overall, I think he's the best manager because uh, oh. he's, he's an expert inside of the pitch and motivation in the Greg style because uh, when he took charge we was at least uh, we went in February when he took charge and we just draw one game we didn't lose and it was a great run and we get promotion in good style yeah and then Stuart, Stuart Gray also yeah. doing a very good job in very the good job very good job yeah. establish establish ourselves in the division which it was before the uh, before Stuart Gray was a little bit uh, difficult to get uh, ourselves established but Stuart Gray managed to did that, establish the the club in the championship. Those and three very different. Those three yeah, managers, very, very, very different. Very, very, very different. different. Completely different one another. Completely. Gary Mason is very, very tough manager. Like I mean, uh, he loves he loves Chef Wins more than anything else. He's crazy for the white and blue. Is the proper mm. training games from the minute one he leave. Like if he's the last one. Like it is, it doesn't give you, a, you know, you don't have time to escape on him, you know, and it's very difficult. Dave Jones is nice and relaxed, nice and calm, so, so calm. And Stuart's great is balanced, mixed both. A bit of both? Yeah, a bit, bit of both. But most people meeting him thought it was a very calm, nice man. No, no, very... Could, couldn't imagine him really shouting. In no, the in, the, in the dressing room. But he could do? Yeah, in the dressing room, yeah, inside. 
inside the dressing room when the game is doesn't work, doesn't go the way he wants yeah. and where we are not performing the, the way he wants he he scream a little bit not like Gary Mason <laughs> but a little bit and the Carlos Carvalho players put the players ready set up the team mm -hmm. the way he wants to play organization inside the pitch and uh, he proved he proved to be the best uh, nice man cheerful personality yeah. But he can he can lose it as well, can't he? He can T lose it temper wise. Yes, he, he, yes, he can. Oh, I remember once when we play Middlesbrough. Uh, Middlesbrough, yeah, that was the one in the dressing room half time. Jesus Christ, his, assi <laughs> his assistant manager suffer. Even his assistant manager suffer. He's the right hand yeah. suffer with his temperament because he was he's really mad. He's a he's a big man. He's a big man. He's a proper. Is the man to drive the men, you know, and uh, he shows that. And uh, the results we've been have is a big part. He played a big part on it because yeah. he's top, he's top manager. Yeah, top, yeah. top manager. Uh, you're the second. Lee Bullen was in here saying, "Yeah, he, he, oh. you were the right guy." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Carlos himself told me he was kicking a water bottle around the dressing room. All over time. the place. All over the place. Yeah, right. He gets mad all over the place, you know. But that's rare, isn't it? He doesn't do that very often. No, 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 not very often because. Uh, He's, he's very like he's very calm, very calm manager, and he knows how to motivate and to take the best yeah. of the players. Yeah. That's why he doesn't need to take that very often. No. But he take that on that time. But since that, yeah. he never did because he never was needed to do. But we know he's capable of it. You know it's there. Yeah, yeah as we you know. Say, we know it's that's there. That's important. That yeah, you know. that's why we didn't give him room to do that, yeah. and we hope not to give him 